and welcome to Little Workroom Crafts. Today is Wednesday the 3rd of May 2023 and obviously we all know what happens on Wednesdays but before we get there, oh I'm Davina and I live on the South East Coast. <laughs> Good start of the UK. <laughs> oh my gosh it's going to be one of them already isn't it? Right okay right so before I start doing the you know what, I'm so excited because this is the, the the normal one, I will say. <laughs> okay, and then, um, uh, yeah, anyway, we'll get there. Right, so I have had a couple of questions from Monday's video. So I'm just going to quickly go over those and then we will get to what you're actually here for. First of all, some lovely lady, uh, I haven't taken any names, so I do apologise, I've asked if they could see my um, fireside blanket. So, I have got it off my chair, <laughs> and this is it. There we go. Having that on my lap, it's actually keep my legs nice and warm. <laughs> Right, so that was that question. Okay, now another question is about the crochet blanket that I am actually making at the moment for mine and Glenn's bed. Now, a lady asked if I block my squares. If not, how do I keep them so square? Right now, I've <laughs> I turn my row, my Turn my piece after every row. So if you see close there, that is the wrong side. That's the right side. Wrong side, right side. So every time I do a round, I turn my piece, do my chain and go around that way. Then turn my piece, do my chain and go around. And that actually do, and I do it on every round. I know some people do it every other or whatever, but I do it on every round. And I will say it does keep the squares absolutely beautiful. So no, none of these have been blocked. It is just the way I do it in the process. Also quickly, I'm just going to, uh, because on Monday I've had so much response about this blanket. It's so much fun. It really is. Um, my actual yarn, oh, I've packed it in my bag. Um, the rainbowy colour yarn, because it isn't actually a bright rainbow, is it? It's more muted, which is more like me anyway. It matches my top, actually. <laughs> anyway, that, um, I've ordered some more balls, as I said on Monday. They have been dispatched, so fingers crossed they'll be here tomorrow, because that's going to do the joining. Uh, some of the, uh, the other squares do the joining and the big board around the outside. Out of 100 gram balls, because I'm doing nine of the actual rainbow rounds, I said to Glenn, I can't believe it, I get three and three quarters. Honestly, I'm about that out, from that finger to that finger, out of, um, of running out of a ball to get the four blocks out of 100 grams. But it doesn't bother me at all. But what I've decided to do is I'm going to pop a photograph here, which I took last night. And you will see that I actually did show you on Friday, on Monday even, that um, I had finished with the colour round the outside. And I kept looking at it and looking at it. And then when I see it again, when I was editing on the camera, and I thought, the rainbow's not popping enough. And I need it to pop. And you all know that I'm using the Women's Institute uh, DK. All this is acrylic apart from the rainbow. That's got a little bit of wool in it. And um, this I know I can get from Hobbycraft. And every time I've been there, and like when I brought this, they have the three for two. So this, if I do get run out of this, I can just get in the car, travel up the road about three quarters of an hour, get some more. And I'm fine because when you're actually doing a big blanket and you've got gaps in between, you don't really have to worry much about dye lots. Um, it's just this one. Um, it is, it is it, quite expensive, actually. It really is. But what I've decided to do and now let's see what you actually think. So you've seen the picture of it as I showed it on Monday, the squares. Now, last night, I got the turquoise minty colour, because it's a bit brighter than that, a little lighter than that. 
and I added a piece. Now look how much that rainbow pops now. It's unbelievable, isn't it? That rainbow yarn. And I'll show you all the blocks just quickly. See, it really pops it just putting that one round on the outside. And then the, the actual um, Hayfield spirit now is going to go against that. So I am so much happier with the way that it's coming together. I really, really am. So, yeah, so that actually is going to be, hopefully, I'm not going to be adding anything else. Because <laughs> I keep adding to these blocks. <laughs> um, any um, Anything else. So then, so now this yarn here is going to join them all together and do the border but i just can't get over just that one round there has made that pop so much so yeah i was happily crocheting away last night while i was watching my marples because you all know how much i love my agatha christie <laughs> and yeah so that is actually hopefully that has answered some questions okay then right so as I say, this is the normal Wednesday. What have you been up to? Wednesday. <laughs> okay, right. So let's hop right in, shall we? Because we have a big mix today. And we have some from out of the country, which is absolutely lovely. So first of all, actually, we are travelling over to South Australia. This is the lovely Sarah. So hi, Sarah. And Sarah has actually only been learning to knit and crochet for only a couple of years, thanks to YouTube. And she's joined a group, which is, ah, oh, I love it when you can join a group because it does become very helpful. It really does. And when do you see her work? You will not believe that she's only been doing this for a couple of years. You really, really won't. Um, first of all, we have up a crochet pattern, which is the Ophelia uh, talks and it's jam jar happiness cow and she's actually made this in a um, an eight ply cotton absolutely gorgeous i will say next up we have the lovely hoogie v stitch blanket in acrylic and patch patchouli patch one of those because you're not all right with my words um absolutely beautiful a lovely big blanket i must admit it's going to be lovely because over there in in america in, in america in australia you're going into your autumn winter so that's going to be really really helpful and then also last there is these beautiful pansy squares and spring flowers and they're done in an eight ply cotton oh my gosh your work is beautiful it's so neat and i tell you what I, you can't believe that you've only been doing this for a couple of years can't believe it but um it's very addictive isn't it this crafting lark <laughs> Anybody that actually has been a crafter or is a crafter will know it's very addictive. <laughs> but I will say, oh, Sarah, absolutely beautiful and well done. Right then, next up, we have the lovely Lorraine. Hi, Lorraine. Now, Lorraine has been sewing. So this is actually her, uh, she's been bag making, made this beautiful bag and a lovely, beautiful butterfly fabric. And that's the first time she's ever put a zip in. So well done. Even though I've been sewing for most of my life, I uh, I put them in, obviously. You know, I put them in clothes and whatever. But I don't know what it is with zips. <laughs> but there we go. Okay, then. The pattern for the bag is from the lovely Ellie from Craft House Magic. Because um, on her website, she do actually do a uh, bag. Uh, 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 patterns as well as kits and so on I've um, got a lot of her um, sock patterns and they are really really lovely and um, she did say that the pattern is very good for beginners because I was beginner friendly the actual little scissor case she is a free we all know how much we love the word free <laughs> is a free uh, template from beautiful things on their website so, I will say, Lorraine, absolutely beautiful. Well done. Well done. Okay, then. Right. So, let's... Oh, 
this is the lovely Denise. Hi, Denise. Now, Denise has got out again, because we all do it. We put stuff away and get it out again, especially a project like this anyway. Uh, this is her scrappy EPP quilt top. Now, I will. she will say that it's the first time she's ever attempted English paper piecing. And um, she started it in 2020 and she's just been inspired to get it out again. Um, first of all, she did make the mistake of cutting her own papers. I've done it myself. When I first started, I cut my own papers and I know exactly where you're going. You don't get them as accurate as you as they should be, but it's a learning curve, you know what I mean? And she's carrying on with it, so good for you. I did too. And then on my next one, I thought, no, I'm going to make my life a lot easier <laughs> and I'm going to buy some pre-cuts. But um, yeah, honestly, it looks absolutely gorgeous. And she's just making them out of um, uh, fat quarters. So she's just picking up fat quarters as she goes kind of thing. But the good thing, as I say, with a, with a big project like this, and you are brave if, it's, if you've never done any English paper piecing before or any quilting before, you know, normally you're advised to make a cushion. <laughs> so to go in like this with a quilt, you know, at, good on you, good on you, I will say. But um, which is really, really good for um, Denise is she's actually um, noticing the distance, uh, the difference in the progress. Hold on a second. Right, I accidentally hit the off button. <laughs> so then, Denise. So, yeah, as I was saying, and Denise has actually noticed the difference in uh, the progress in her stitching and, you know, and, and as she's gone along, which is absolutely brilliant. I love this project. I really, really do love this project. And well done, you. Um, yeah, keep on going. That's all I can say is keep on going. Right then, so next up we have the lovely Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Now, Sarah is actually knitting from stash. It's all stash busters. So at the moment, so most of the uh, most, so hang on, start again, Davina. So Sarah is knitting um, and it's all stash busting at the mo. So all King Cole cuddles, wool. Okay, so let's go in there. The blanket, absolutely gorgeous blanket. So this blanket, she has actually backed with a chenille um, wool, which wasn't actually asked for in the pattern, but she thought she'd do it anyway. And I bet that's so snuggly. I really, really do. Also, as you will see, um, Sarah has also knitted two cardigans, one pink and one blue. I tell you, they're going to be so warm and soft in that yarn. Absolutely gorgeous. And also, these teddy bears. I think they're so cute. I really do. They are brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And also, because Sarah's been a right little busy bee, <laughs> she has also knitted this tweed cardi. So, all from Stash. Fortunately, she don't know the name of the yarn because, of you know, sometimes your yarns don't have labels anymore, do they? But she does know that it is in a DK. So, Sarah, absolutely brilliant. Honestly, they are all brilliant. So, well done, you. Okay, then. Right. So, what have we here? Right. Okay. We have the lovely... Christine, another lady from Australia. So, hi! <laughs> now, she has made this beautiful pink V-neck jumper. Honestly, it is so pretty. And what a pretty colour, pink. And also this lovely hat. Oh, the colours in that hat are absolutely beautiful, Christine. So, well done. Well done, you. Right, now we have something completely different. Now, Catel, <laughs> uh, I think, please forgive me if I've pronounced your name wrong, has said at the beginning of her email that she uh, hasn't had a lot of time to do any of her crochet. <laughs> You'll understand why in a moment. Right, okay. She was asked to make, for her friend's wedding, a, some bouquets and buttonholes and stuff. Now, honestly, she self-taught from YouTube 
and she actually did make uh, all um, the bouquets and the buttonholes and everything for her daughter's wedding four years ago. And this is where her friend actually saw her work. And then obviously now she's asked if she could make some of them for her. I'm going to start buttoning up these photographs because these are amazing. They really are. So she made four bouquets for the bridesmaids, one for the bride, one mother of uh, the boat mother of the bride hang on i get it mother of the bride cause causage <laughs> and 21 buttonholes they are so pretty self-taught that is amazing honestly absolutely beautiful and i bet you they looked beautiful on the day i really really do so well done that's what I love about doing this. We have so much different things coming through every week. So a big round of applause. So well done. Well done to everybody this week. Honestly, absolutely brilliant. Right then, I am going to hop off now and get this piece edited. And then, what's the time? I will hopefully be able to get the Jubilee one recorded and edited and up as well today so because we have some lovely lovely bits come through for that as well okay then right so i's going to be a, a say a quick goodbye because i'm going to be hopping on here again in a moment <laughs> so there'll be two videos today so this is the first and then you'll have the jubilee special yeah it's a jubilee because it's <laughs> you'll have a jubilee special um no it's not a jubilee it's the coronation <laughs> special in a moment <laughs> oh my gosh right okay yes so you will have the combination special in a bit <laughs> so i'm gonna say <laughs> take care stay safe and as always my lovelies happy crafting <laughs>